Alrighty, next on the agenda, parking of motorhomes, vacation trailers, boat trailers, camperettes, and all other vehicles not in daily use. Best thing to do on this whole thing, because the ordinance as it is is trash. It just repeal that section of the ordinance and do not add anything to it. Um, but we would repeal it and make it go away. Section one, strike the word deleted. Just make it repealed in its entirety. Make it repealed in its entirety, and uh, well, strike the rest of it. Before we say section two, in the actual zoning itself, 20.72.050 parking area design, section two, <coughs> part B, part B is motor home vacation trip. Okay, yeah, we will be striking part B. Keeping A and C in place. <coughs> and because this was a zoning ordinance, we didn't feel that trying to apply some uh, public safety requirements under zoning would fit. We would rather readdress this issue under public safety um, through health and safety. I'm not sure where we would put it in the zone. Under section one, see, that's Title 20, uh, 0.72.050, subparagraph A to B. And to section B. one amends the ordinance. Section, section one of this ordinance is not. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you have a proposal of where to put this in public safety? Uh, we need to change it. Because there's a lot of problems with it the way it is. No, I understand that. But if we do, if we scrap this now, based on our track record, it'll never come back. Because unless we do something with it right now, we're never going to remember to do it. So, if the intent is to put this in public safety, let's see in a draft ordinance to change the code for public safety and get all of it. It was normally going to Title Eight. Okay. So, what, but what I'm asking for is, mm -hmm. let's see an ordinance that puts it in there next week, or not next week, but whenever, to do it all at one time. Well, we need to repeal this because we're liable to be sued right now. So you get some people really upset about this. Not myself. I, I've never filed a lawsuit and I, I don't intend to. But I've heard from, yeah, there's been about 15 people on my porch. Asking me what's going on, what do we got to do? I'm going to sue it. But we are at risk right now of being sued by the federal court for violation of the 14th Amendment because that you've got the all other vehicles, it's impossible to enforce it. Unless the city parks somebody out in front of everybody's driveway and make sure that every vehicle in that driveway is being used every day. Just to add to that, because we're targeting a specific vehicle and not enforcing it on any of the other ones, um, that, that makes it a discriminatory practice, and that's where I think we are in trouble precious. because it's arbitrary and capricious, and it's, we're trying to enforce a zoning ordinance, through, or trying to enforce public safety issues through a zoning ordinance. And uh, zoning ordinance, you got to look at what the original paragraph was, which is parking, parking area design, and then if in any residential district, public or private parking areas and parking spaces shall not be permitted in any required yard except as provided herein. And that's one of the provisions is that you have, if you mm -hmm. want to then if we repeal this, they're not allowed in, if we just repeal this and don't change that, that removes the approval for them to be in the entire yeah, area. Because okay. A says required parking spaces shall be permitted on driveways in the required front yard in conjunction with any single family or two family dwelling. These types of vehicles were required to have space mm -hmm. in the side yard. Vehicles. But we're not, we're saying that. But this, if we repeal this, just strike this now, this is also where they're permitted to be kept in the side yard. So if we repeal
repeal this as is and don't replace it, it becomes no longer legal to park it in your side yard. You'd be allowed to park it in the front now, but you wouldn't be allowed to park it in the side anymore. Only if we have some sort of restriction. Yes, yeah, well it's, it, yeah, in parking design where it says they're only allowed, they're not allowed in any required yard except as permitted in these provisions. And this is the provision that allows them in the side yard. No, in any front yard. It doesn't have, we don't have a provision. It was what, no, the, the, very, the start of it there where you said this is, they're not allowed in any required yard except as permitted in these provisions. Any required. So if you have a required side yard, but B is what's allowing you to park in that side do yard. Do we have a requirement for a side yard? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they're required for fire access. Yeah. Every residential mm -hmm. property has to have at least one side yard, 10 feet wide. Mm -hmm. And then the overhangs can encroach into that to the east. Yeah, um, because it's a zoning ordinance, if you're going to make a change to it, even a repeal, it has to go through a public hearing. And this isn't the first time we, we have public safety in zoning, because if you, we all remember the fencing, <laughs> for six months we talked about security fencing already. It was longer than that, it was a year, and that's in, and that's in here as well. So I'm just saying, if we're going to do it, let's do it right. I don't, I'm not opposed to it, but let's do it right <coughs> for once. I also think we should take a broader look at parking restrictions. Um, taking out Section 2 eliminates some of these conflicts, but uh, 1031.50 says you can't park an RV on any city street ever, the way it's written now. And 1031.40 says you can't block any sidewalk anytime, even to stopping or standing, let alone parking. So we should have some sort of coordinated look. This is another one of those cases where different parts of the code have been amended at different times and they, they already disagree with each, each other. Okay. And we should we should straighten that all out, not make one change that makes even more things disagree with each other. Right. Well, and that's where the governance committee we need to go that information is fully. Okay, one thing here you're worried about is you're not going to be able to be sued by anybody unless we take some enforcement against them. So right now we're not taking any enforcement against them, so they can line up on everybody's porch and threaten to sue or threaten to tar and feather me, whatever they want to do. They can't legally do it because we are not doing any enforcement of it. Now, I went through this thing and looking at my own situation, number one is my zoning is completely different than everybody else's in town. Number two is, I'm sure that if somebody wants to sit back and scrutinize with all of my vehicles and everything else, they're going to find where I have some code violations. So myself, I'm not, not going to get involved and discuss this at all. I'm, I'm out of it. The problem we have is there have been 80 plus letters that have gone out there. There's no enforcement against it. So many letters. They don't know that. What? Oh, we send other letters out. Well, we have, we have, we have, we've notified them, but I, have not, I haven't sent letters, but we have notified them. Yeah, we haven't done anything. I think the best way to do it is uh, I'll talk to Sean tomorrow and have a quick piece of paper to put down there. Do you have a list of addresses? Like the home? Yes. And I would let the administration contact the Albert reporter, it's not legislative. Are you calling me already? What's that? The, the non-enforcement notice is also on the front page of the city website. And, 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 it, and it's been on the reader board, too. Yeah. Any other council discussion on this? Uh, we generally don't take public comment during a... I understand program. that. But about that, um, I have been in contact with a couple of senior citizens that are concerned about their motorhomes, and they haven't heard, and that's part of the reason why I'm here, that there is not going to be um, any enforcement about this. And so I've been following 
the email about the separated parents. But they have heard that there's not going to be an enforcement, that there is not going to be a letter, or that there should not, or should be a letter, and we haven't. So they need to get this letter. They're in panic. And I just stopped this one lady from spending over $300 to get her yard fixed. And there are people spending money. So that's why the people have threatened to sue. So, you know, that those letters went out immediately, but the other letters are not going out immediately so these people can save their money. So I know that you don't take comments, but people are spending money to get their motorhomes in storage that um, they were threatened that it had to, you know, they had to get them off their property immediately. So it's got to be fixed immediately. That was the ask that I directed the public the insurance company to her public works director was to notify each person so that said no, this was not being enforced. And I thought I'd notified everybody else. I'll make sure they get contacted as well. So if I may, did you find out from this young lady who those people are and I want you to contact them tomorrow. I will. The code has a lot of discrepancies in it. We're going to fix the whole code for us. We need to go back to the way the code is written a piece at a time. We need to fix it piece at a time and make it consistent throughout. Council Slater, bring this back. Send it back to Council Slater. Okay. Resolution 2014-122, INET Systems Contract. Thank you. 